This one goes out to Tasha, who wanted to know how to identify animal ingredients in cosmetics. The truth is, it can be a bit tricky. Although in the US there are laws that require our cosmetics to list the ingredients, there are no laws requiring cosmetic companies to specify where an ingredient is sourced on the label. So finding out whether an ingredient originates from an animal, a plant, or a lab is largely the responsibility of you, the consumer. Some of the common animal-based ingredients can be easy to identify once you learn them, like guanine. This one comes from an animal, and Tasha, it's one you know, fish. It's guanine that gives some cosmetic products their pearly iridescent effects. But for other ingredients, the source isn't always as obvious. Here are a few examples. Glycerin. Glycerin can also come from a plant or animal source. This is because glycerin can originate as a byproduct from potassium or sodium hydroxide combined with either plant or animal fats to get the glycerin. Even an ingredient like collagen, which sounds like it obviously comes from an animal, and in most cases probably still does, now has a synthetic version that can be incorporated into a cosmetic. Another complication is some ingredients can be found on the label under a bunch of different names. For example, carmine, which is also known as carminic acid, cochineal extract, or natural red number four. And sometimes cosmetics will use animals in different ways, some which you may approve of and some which you may disapprove of. Let's talk about lanolin, which comes from the wool of sheep. If they're shearing the sheep, they're not killing the animal to get the lanolin. This may bother vegans, but not bother those who just want cruelty-free products. So it sort of depends on your reasons for avoiding animal products to begin with. If you're just concerned about animal testing, there are three certifications you can look for. There's the Leafing Bunny, I love saying that, Pet is Cruelty Free, or Choose Cruelty Free. These organizations are against animal testing in cosmetics, and PETA and Choose Cruelty Free have vegan accreditation, which means the companies that they list use no animal products in their cosmetics. I'll link to their cruelty free list in the description below. And in an upcoming video, we'll talk about cruelty free because I think it sort of mischaracterizes the beauty industry and can also potentially mislead you. Something I've noticed as an overall trend is animal products and cosmetics have been declining in popularity for a while now, but there are products with animal ingredients still out there like snow slime and others. Recap, to avoid animal ingredients, the best thing you can do is to look for reliable vegan accreditations like the ones I mentioned or find a transparent company that supports your values. The good news is in the last few years there are lots of cruelty free, vegan, and vegetarian brands out there. Before I end this video, I want to tap the community here and ask you to help Tasha out. If you have any great vegan, vegetarian, cruelty-free sources that you want to share with her, put them in the comment section below. That way we can all learn about them together. Subscribe for more info on your cosmetics and check out my next video right here.